Hello guys, welcome back to another Terraria video and in this video we are going to be looking back at something that I did three years ago and that is smashing one million demon altars. So I have done the same again today, I spawned in a million demon altars, this took like an hour or two, smashed them all up and this is the end result. As you can see, everything is completely replaced by ores, all of the stone, mud, dirt and everything like that is completely gone. So let's take a look at this world and we're going to be looking at a couple of things. Mainly, does this get rid of the corruption and are there any other strange things that happen when you smash 1 million demon altars? Okay, so we're going to take a look at the world to start with just to see how it looks after smashing 1 million demon altars or altars, sorry. So it looks fine at the top because this is overground, but as soon as we get underground, it starts looking quite crazy. Just look at this. It's like, this looks really cool actually for underground. It looks very fitting, but look, it's just cobalt absolutely everywhere. And then once you get to a certain level, you can start to see the auricle come. So here it is. And it's sort of infused with the cobalt. I like the look of that. It looks more or less half and half. So maybe it has similar spawn rates. Uh, they might be just a bit more cobalt, but overall it looks kind of half and half. And then of course, you get a bit further down and this is where the adamantite starts. So that is a fun fact, adamantite will not spawn until you get to a certain depth underground. And then you keep going down, keep going down, keep going down, and here is the underworld. And of course, in the underworld you can have all three spawning, so this looks so pretty. I like the look of that, how it's just, there's just no uh, silt left over. And there's even little specks of it attached to the bottom like here. That is very cool. So now let's take a look at how much of the world is corrupted once we have littered the world with hard mud ores. Firstly, we need to know how much of a normal world is corrupted. So we're quickly gonna do that by spawning in a dryad in three small worlds. So here is number one. How corrupted is this world, Alayla? 9% corrupt. So that is, the first world is 9% corrupt. The second world is, come here, Dryad. 18%, wow! That is a, 18, that is a massive difference. So the first world is 9% corrupt. The second world is 18% corrupt. And the third world is hopefully like 15, because then we can make a nice in-between, 14%. So 9, 18, and 9, <laughs> 18. We need to check that on T-Edit. That sounds like too much. So apparently this is 18% corrupt, but it doesn't look that corrupted to me. All it is is this section here. I mean, we do have the hill here that's corrupt and it goes all the way across, as well as this section here that has a lot of sand and stuff that has turned into ebon sand blocks. But anyway, onto the video, let's take a look at just how much of the altar world is corrupted and if it's very close to zero or if it's still quite a high number. Here we go guys, time to take a look at just how corrupt this world is. My guess is going to be 3%. See if you can beat that guys. I have been so wrong in all of my guesses in recent videos, so hopefully 3% is correct. Come on Dryad, come on Ariella. 13% corrupt. What? 13? That is crazy. I thought it would definitely be quite a low number, but I guess it's because uh, because a lot of the corruption is on the overworld, so obviously none of that will be affected. Also, this world has been alive for quite a while because I spent like a couple of hours destroying altars, so maybe that was enough time for a lot of it to spread. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I don't know why I thought the number would be like zero. So even though we've destroyed all of the underworld and replaced it, it turns out that the corruption is still very present indeed. And finally, let's just take a look at things that do not get affected by smashing demon altars. So obviously the dungeon is fully intact. It also looks like the obsidian uh, biome is not affected by smashing demon altars. If we go across, we can see that marbled are not affected. The underground desert is completely unaffected. Also, beehives, the uh, temple 
And I think that's about it. That's everything that is not affected by uh, smashing altars underground. So I really do like this. Just one closing thing. As we can see the uh, the levels at which things start. So we have the Ven at the top, the strip of only Cobalt. And then we have the strip of what looks like almost 50-50 uh, Arickle, Cum and Mithril. And at the bottom we have the mixed bag. And that is such a beautiful sight. It never gets old. And one final thing. I find it very interesting that the edges of the world cannot spawn the hard mod ores. This must be some kind of safety thing. Maybe it would crash the game if it tries changing the blocks too far to the edge. I have no idea why it is like this. Why do you guys think it stops spawning about 100 blocks from the edge of the world? So on each side of the world you have this area here where there's just like a straight vertical line where the game has told the game to not spawn anymore or oh, crazy that i cannot work out why it was programmed like that but like i said maybe it's some sort of safety system to stop the game from bugging out very cool and very interesting indeed so that wraps up today's video guys i hope you did enjoy and hopefully there will be a video tomorrow enjoy the rest of your day and i shall see you guys later